Uh, so we're in section 4.1. And we're going to talk about radians and degrees. So before we before we get into start getting into some some detail, I wanted to just talk about the word trigonometry. So what what does that what does that word mean? Well, let's let's break it into pieces. What what's what would what's a trigon? Triangle. Just like a, a polygon is many-sided shape, a octagon, eight-sided shape. Trigon is a triangle. Metry has to do with measuring. So we're going to talk about measuring. Essentially, trigonometry is about measuring triangles. And the interesting thing is we'll, we'll turn talking about triangles into talking about circles and kind of go back and forth. So the, a lot of times in math, we turn problems that we don't know how to do into problems that have to do with triangles especially right triangles, because right triangles are nice because of the Pythagorean theorem. Thank goodness that exists. Um, and we'll turn tr problems that have to do with triangles into problems that have to do with circles, because circles are, circles are nice. All right, so we're measuring triangles. That's what we're... All right, so let's... Triangles, the, the triangles are made up of three angles. So let's talk about how we're going to work with angles in, when, in, our, in our journey through trigonometry. So there are my x and y axes, x and y. And I'm going to draw an angle here with its vertex. That's good. That's what I want. Vertex at the origin. And I'm going to call this angle... I don't know why in trigonometry we end up using Greek letters, but that's just the way it is, maybe because the Greeks developed a lot of trigonometry. Um, we're going to call the angle theta. Um, and I'm going to put a ray here. So this, this is just one side of the angle. I'm going to, so what do, we, what do we call this, this point here where the two rays come together? It is at at the origin, but just for the angle, what do we call that point? The vertex. That's the vertex of the angle. We call this side the where we start the initial side, and the side where we end the terminal side. And for angles, for when we're talking about angles, yes, we just cleared out boxes. Oh, look at all this stuff. Oh. Yeah, that's. Uh, it might have to do with uh, someone. Someone's grade in this class. Thanks, Price. This it looks like a big envelope of cash. Yeah, as long as I get my A in those Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. We, I don't know. That, uh, that looks a little thin for an A. <laughs> um, we call the counterclockwise direction the positive direction. And we call the clockwise direction the negative direction. So we rotate from the from the x-axis. Counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is negative. When we have an angle situated like this with the vertex at the origin and our initial side on the x-axis, we call this angle uh, in standard position. Um, India, yeah. I put that in the office on my desk. So this, this, 
angle would be in standard position. Um, and what else? Uh, we'll also talk about which, in which quadrant the angle lies. The quadrant of the angle is where the terminal side lies. So this angle that I drew here would be a first quadrant angle. If my terminal side is over here, it'd be second quadrant, third quadrant, et cetera, et cetera. Angles in standard position with the same terminal side are called coterminal angles. Uh-huh. What do you mean by standard position? Vertex at the origin. Initial side on the x-axis. Okay. So they have the same terminal side. So just thinking about it, how if we start in standard position, how would we get a coterminal angle? Something, uh, an, another angle that has the same same terminal side. If we're at some some location, how will we get another angle? Yeah. Yeah, we can just rotate around 360 degrees, rotate in a circle again, and we get back to the same place. We could go positive or negative, and we could go any multiple, in an integer multiple, of 360 degrees. We could go once, twice, three times. So that's one thing that makes. Um, trigonometry a little different than, than, than what you've done before, is we get this, this repetition happening. All right, so we're good with our, uh, good with our terminology here. And we'll talk about standard position and terminal <coughs> side, this and that, quite a bit. And we'll come back to coterminal angles in, in just a second. All right, the next thing we need to talk about, the kind of the, the big idea for today are radians. Radians are, I, I like to think of them as a more, a more ma natural way to talk about angles. So we said the, the circle is 360 degrees. Why, why 360 degrees? Any ideas? The, the idea is that, for example, the ancient the Babylonians um, did a lot of astronomy, did a lot of measurement. They were pretty good, pretty good mathematicians. Um, did I tell this class about the tablet that they found? That the, so there's a tablet from about 1,000 BCE, and they had found that there were columns that had Pythagorean triples, but there were other pieces of the tablet they didn't know what it was. Well, just recently, within the last couple of years, they discovered that it was uh, tables of trigonometry. And Babylonians used base 60. And it turns out because they used base 60, these tables of trigonometry were more accurate than tables that we have today. And the, that the, t the time that the tablet dates from predates when we thought humans had discovered trigonometry by quite a bit. So the ba Babylonians did, did a lot of math. So, how many, so 360 has to do with the number of days in a year. Number of days in a year is roughly 360. So you subdivide that. 360, the Babylonians used base 60. So 60 divides, three, is a divisor of 360. If you think of our clock, we, it's kind of divided into three, 360 pieces um, and all the different subdivisions, the five, the 15, those are <coughs> subdivisions of, of the 360 degrees. So that's, that's part of where the 360 degrees comes from. Anyway, radians are a little more natural way of measuring angles. And we're going to talk about that now. So the first thing we need to know for radians is the letter S. And I try to make it nice and curvy so it doesn't look like a 5. S is usually used for arc length. So S is going to be the arc length around a circle is what we're going to talk about today. 
and we're going to define the radian measure of an angle on a circle. The radian measure is S over R, which is arc length over the radius. So let's draw a picture of what, what we're talking about here. Uh, here's my, uh, here are my axes. So what we're thinking about is an angle being kind of a, a point that we're rotating around the origin. So there's my, there's my ray, and we have this point, and there's my angle, theta. Well, the length of that ray, if we're going to a point here, is the radius, and we can think of swinging that angle in a nice little arc like so. And this is the arc length. So we say that angle, the, the radian measure of that angle is the arc length divided by the radius. Well, that means that one radian, so this is going to equal 1, S over R is going to equal 1, when the arc length equals the radius. So if I swing this around just far enough so this arc length is the same length as that radius, that, that gives me one radian. One nice thing about radians, the arc length and the radius have the same units, some unit of length, centimeters, inches, something. So I have inches over inches. Radians do not have any units. So we don't have to do any kind of conversions when we're working with radians because the units cancel here. So we call it radians are unitless. That's convenient. Well, why, why are radians a, a little more natural way of, of measuring, uh, measuring angles? Let's, let's dig down into that a little bit. What do we call the arc length when we go all the way around a circle? The circumference. Um, <coughs> for one full circle, the arc length equals the circumference. And for circles, we have this relationship between the circumference and the diameter. That relationship has, is the number pi. So do we remember our formula for the circumference? So 2 pi r. So for one full circle, the circumference S equals 2 pi R. And from this, our angle S over R equals 2 pi. So the radians, radians have to do with the fact that the circumference divided by the diameter of a circle is pi. So radians are related to that constant that's true for every circle. So there are two pi radians in a full circle. So that, that subdivision, that, that, that angle, doesn't have to do with how long the year is or how long it takes the Earth to spin on its axis or anything like that. that 
2 pi radians comes from the fact that for every circle, no matter how big, no matter how small, the circumference divided by the diameter is pi. So the radian, radian measure is, is closely related to that, that fundamental fact about circles. So that's why it's, it's a more natural way to measure angles. So what we do is we subdivide that 2, two pi radians to come up with the angle measures, the, degree, the angle measures in circles, not the degree measure, the angle measure. So that's, that's our background on why radians are a little more natural way of measuring a circle. Well, since there are 2 pi radians in a circle, how many, how many radii then fit around a circle? Well, how big is 2 pi? About 6. So no matter how big or small the circle is, if we cut a piece of string the length of the radius and laid it around the circle, there would be about six of them that fit around the circle, no matter what, no matter how big or small you made the circle. So that's, that's why th that's a more natural way of measuring angles. No matter, no matter what the size of the circle, no matter what, you get about six radii that fit around the circumference of the circle. All right. So there's our, our background on radius and why we like to use radians. Okay, so let's, let's, so I think that was, we got, maybe we got our up, maybe up to our knees, almost, when we were talking about radians. But we'll, we'll back, we'll get back into the shower a little water now. Um, so let's talk about a little more, um, um, or a little less esoteric stuff for now. Now we know a little bit about radians. We'll use radians a lot. Let's talk about a couple of other things. Um, acute angles. And what we want to do is start being able to think in radians rather than in degrees. So acute angle, what do we mean by an acute angle? Yeah? Less than 90? Um, can it be negative? Not negative, so between 0 and 90. So in radians, So if 2 pi radians is a full circle, 90 degrees would be how many radians? Pi halves. Or pi over 2. And I a lot, often we'll leave radians off. We'll just say pi over 2 because radians don't have any units. So an acute angles are between 0 and pi over 2. How about uh, obtuse angles? Um, between, well, uh, just cut off one, one side. Not between zero and pi, but between pi halves, pi halves and pi. So between 90 and 180 degrees. And we're, for both of these, we're talking about, uh, we're talking about positive, positive angles. How about complementary angles? What do we mean when we say angles are complementary? They say nice things about each other's clothes. Thank you. What, what are complementary angles? Yeah, then? Add to, uh, that's, that's the, other, the other one. Complementary adds to pi halves. And if we were thinking in degrees, complementary angles would add to 90 degrees. And we're talking about positive angles. And then supplementary,
If two angles are supplementary, they add to pi. So if we had an angle, uh, if we had an angle, we're given an angle and it says find its complement, how would we go about doing that? Yeah, pi sub over two yeah, just subtract from pi over two. Same thing for supplement. If we wanted to find the supplement, subtract from pi. Um, and then I'm going to, let's write down what we, we said in words before about coterminal angles. So if we're given an angle and we want to find a coterminal angle, we said we could add 360 degrees, so we could add or we could go the other direction around the circle, add or subtract 2 pi. So often in the, in the homework on, on a quiz or a test, it would say, the problem might say, find two angles, one positive and one negative, that are, co that are coterminal with such and such. Add 2 pi to get the positive, subtract 2 pi to get the negative. And you can also add or subtract any multiple of 2 pi. You could add or subtract 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, any multiple of 2 pi. All right, so we good with those, those, um, those terms. Sometimes we might want to convert from angles to degrees, or from degrees, degrees to or <coughs> radians to degrees, degrees to radians. So let's talk about our conversions. That's the last thing we need to need to go over today. All right. So our conversions come from the fact that 360 degrees equals 2 pi. Radians. If I divide both sides by 2, we, and we already talked about this, 180 equals pi radians. And often you'll leave the radians off. You'll just say 180 equals pi. So our conversions come from this. If we divide both sides of this equation by 180, I get 1 degree equals pi over... 180 radians. And if I divide both sides by pi, I get 1 radian, I'm just going to say rad, equals 180 over pi degrees. And I'm going to put the degree here <coughs> and the degree here. This is going to be our conversion from degrees to radians. And what I think, what th think about with this one is if we multiply this by some number of degrees, the degrees in the numerator and denominator, those units cancel out. And I'm left with radians. So I'm thinking of the units canceling out. And this is going to be from radians to degrees. So if I multiply some angle in radians by 180 over pi, the radians in the denominator cancel with the radians in the numerator, and I just have degrees left. So I think of the units canceling out when I'm thinking of these conversions. So those are our conversions. They come from this relationship. <coughs> so let's look at a couple quick examples. Usually in radians, when you're talking about radians, you're going to write your, your radian measure in terms of some kind of reduced fraction, usually, not, not necessarily always. So let's look at a couple of examples. So we want to convert two radians for this first one. 120 degrees. So I'm going to do my conversion. I'm going to multiply by 
pi over 180. And I visualize these degrees canceling out. I'll turn, make this red just so my parentheses are consistent. There we go. There's my conversion. And then I reduce 120 over 180. So what is 120 over 180 reduced to? So we get 2 pi over 3. 120 over 180 is 2 thirds. And we would just write 2 pi over 3. Usually you leave the radians off because there aren't any units there. Negative 315 degrees. Do the same conversion. And 315 over 180, what does that reduce to? There we go, 7 over 4. You were close with 21 over 12. 7 pi over 4 and negative, since we have a negative there. So usually that's how you want to you reduce, reduce your fractions. Um, let's do 2 degrees. Um, first one, 5 pi over 6. I'm going to multiply, this time I'll do my conversion, I'll write it in blue since we're going the other way. 180 degrees over pi. So I'm thinking of the radians here and the radians in the numerator, those, those units canceling out. Well here the pi's cancel out and I get 5 times 180 over 6. Well 180 over 6 is 30, so this is 150 degrees. And when we have radian measure, you won't always have a pi in your radian measure. So we could have seven radians. Well, let's think for a second how big seven radians is. A little more than two pi, right? So our conversion should be more than 360 degrees. So let's write our conversion. This one doesn't turn out as a nice fraction. So this one I just multiply calculate out in my calculator and I get that's about uh, 401 one. Point one degrees about so a little more than 360 but if you're if you get have an angle measurement that doesn't have a degree there, that means that angle is in, in radians. All right, let's talk about some common angles and then we'll be done. These angles will become old friends over the course of the year. So we know, we already know that 360 degrees is the same as two pi radians. And 180 degrees is pi radians. 90 degrees, pi over two radians. How about 45 degrees? Pi over four, right? Half of this. How about uh, 60 degrees? Pi over three. Because 60 is a third of 180. How about um, 30 degrees? Pi over 6, half of, half of this. So those are going to be our common, degree, common angle measurements <coughs> in radians. And we'll become very familiar with these and their, their, their counterparts in other quadrants. <coughs> Questions? All right. Twelve through eighty eight every third. Um, when I do these every third assignments, 
if the last problem in the set doesn't have happen to be one of those every thirds, just stop at the one before. Sometimes I miscount or usually what happens is 88 is probably the end of a problem section. So I was like, oh, I want them to go through here. So don't worry if it doesn't end on a third problem. Just do the one before. <coughs>